first off, I got a tapestry and I am so happy about it. I literally got it two days ago and I am so in love with it. It is just so beautiful and I'm very glad I got it. And that was like my birthday present and my birthday was like over two months ago. And I ordered this and it was on back order and I finally got it so yay. <laughs> I am just so in love with it, but that's not the topic of this video, so... <laughs> okay. So in today's video, I have, like, my little journal, I guess you can call. And I just want to write, um... Not write. <laughs> Talk about some topics that have been on my mind lately that you might be going through or that topics that people have been going through and just didn't feel like speaking up on YouTube or social media. And... I just want to talk about it lately, so, and I'm been thinking of a name for this, and I, I want to make it a series, so it's going to be like Thoughts in My Head, or something like that, <laughs> I don't know, but of course you'll see once you watch this video, so <laughs> that's what I'm going to name this series, if you guys like it and stuff, so let's get into it. <laughs> so the first real topic that I want to talk about is social media. Yeah, yeah, you guys are probably like so tired of hearing that Asina O'Neill or social media or social media real or social media is fake or absolutely anything about that, but I actually sort of touched on this topic on my Instagram and um, I'll put it like up here or whatever. So You guys can read the caption or anything like that but I I was saying that social media is real and it is fake it just depends on how you take in those both aspects of social media I mean not everybody is in it for the money or attention or anything like that like I'm not in it for the attention I just want to spread the word on veganism and you know help people if they need help and anything I can help them with so that is really what I'm here for and I find it a great creative outlet because I love photography. <laughs> Not just food photography, I take pictures of other things too. <laughs> but I enjoy Instagram and I, I, I enjoy YouTube too. I it's just, I love, <laughs> most of you probably don't know this about me, but I absolutely love everything in the directing business and the photography business. I love videography. It's my one of my passions. I am obsessed with it. <laughs> I love the arts. It's like my life. So, you know, I don't really care about the numbers I have. I just care if people appreciate that what I'm putting out there and if it's actually helping people that that was is what brings me joy. If what the things I'm saying help people and I cannot be happier about that. But there's also a fake side to social media, the attention seekers or the people who put tons of filters on their photos or say that it's no filter when there is a filter, you know, things like that or say that they're going to do something when they don't really do it or they're actually starving themselves when they are posting lots of fo food photos. So, the, like, both of those things are a part of social media. It just depends on how you take it into perspective <laughs> of the things that you do see on social media but I mean I'm not gonna get into too much of a scene O'Neill yes she was a huge inspiration in the vegan community she still is a huge inspiration to the vegan community but I just think the whole thing is kind of far-fetched of what she did and I somewhat see it as an attention seeker, but, you know, because she has her blog out now, she quit social media per se, and she's all over the news. So she's getting a lot of attention for it, so, and, and, <laughs> and Grant, she gets a lot of attention for her blog, so, I mean, that's what 
most of my opinions on it, but leave your comments down below to see what your opinion is, because I would love to hear it. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> So, in all in all, social media is fake and it is real, just how you take it into perspective, how you live with it, you know, what you do on social media, how, you know, if you get paid for the things you believe in or if you don't get paid for the things you don't believe in, it just depends on how you feel and what you did on social media or do on social media to make you happy on social media. It is about the people, so it is going to be social, there's going to be offers, there's going to be people, there's going to be talking, everything about it, I mean... It's social media, that's what it's meant for, so it just depends on how you take it in perspective and how you see it as, so it's just all up to you guys. <laughs> I'm drinking peppermint tea right now, so. <laughs> that's the stuff. <laughs> the next thing that has been really on my mind, mainly because of 40 Below, f <laughs> 40 Below Fruity, Tara, who is a raw vegan, and I'll link her channel down below, or up here somewhere, and she has inspired me so much about minimalism and all things simple, a simple living life, and I have been really intrigued by that, and living a more simple life in everything that I do, using social media less, which is a big part of my life, and a few days ago, I actually left my phone at home, and it was wonderful. It was probably the best thing I had done in months. Once you get rid of the things that you use most in life and use it less, you realize how much you had relied on that specific object or person. And it just, it took everything in my mind and changed it. Like, I believe, like, I am so grateful that I have what I have, but I would love to use it less, especially technology. Lately more, I've been reading more. I used to read all the time, and then I abruptly stopped, and now I'm reading more, and I love it. Reading is one of my joys, and I'm so grateful for books that I have, and if you have any books, <laughs> please give me some some <laughs> some suggestions down below and I couldn't wait to read more books. Right now I'm reading Looking for Alaska by John Green. I hear it's a really good book, but I'm I'm more into the mystery or health and nutrition books and stuff like that. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them down below. But I have just been thinking about a lot living a minimalism life and using like, oh, using the bare minimum of what I need and I don't want. But enjoying it, like, when you take your head out of the phone, you just see so much more. You, you live in the now, and I have been enjoying that so much. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how much you can see in the world once you just take a few things away and I I love it and I'm going to continue growing in minimal minimalism I'm not saying that I am a minimalist but I enjoy living a simple life and that's what I've been searching for for months and then I have been putting research into minimalism and I have been enjoying it so far I am so like gradually and slowly slowingly becoming a more simple person and living a more simple life and I encourage all of you to do it too it's amazing and I love it <laughs> but what uh, another thing that I've been thinking about is how far you should take it like how far should you live a simple life how far you should put that into your perspective what things should be out of your life and what things should be in your life. It's just, it's tweaking my brain a bit about how crazy a person could go to a huge extent to doing something like that and I'm very intrigued by it and yeah, I mean like, it's, it's an example of veganism, like how far should you take veganism and 
how little you should take veganism. Like, you can be a really relaxed vegan and not care what you eat except if it's vegan, you know, like, you don't care if you're raw to four, fully raw, or start sleuthing one day. And, or you could just be so strictly raw or start sleuthing or raw to four that you just only eat the times and what you eat. Like, you only eat raw, make sure it's raw and stuff. But I have been thinking about that a lot lately, how far you can extend to the things that you love and that, that things that you're passionate about. It's just interesting how far people would do to take something that they're so passionate about. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it just doesn't... It, it just really picks my brain at how far people will take something or how little they would do to do something. I, it just interests me. I don't know. <laughs> Wonderlusting. That has been me for the past few months. And I cannot wait to do that. I want to travel literally everywhere in this world. And I cannot wait to travel. But when I was thinking about traveling all around the world with my Wonderlust, I have, I, have, I have like such a huge heart for Wonderlust. I am a huge Wonderlust. I want to travel all around the world. I have the urge to travel. I want to travel and see the world. I, I have been feeling like I would learn more when I, if I, like when I learn around the world and travel the world, experience different cultures than I would in school. And then that just got me thinking, like literally last night I was thinking, do I want to go to college? <laughs> and then, I'm, I, I, this is my last year of middle school, so I am a middle school student, but why are we thinking about college now? Why do we feel we have to go to college? Is it the social norm, or is it a feeling that our parents always pass down onto us? Why do we have to go to college? Why must we go to college to get what we want in life? I understand that it's like so hard to get a job nowadays and like it would be so called easier if we did go to college. But what if we were not happy? What if we hated the competitive atmosphere or the yearning for to be accepted and getting A's and good grades and all that or the fear of failing and not doing well and feel like you're trying so hard but it just doesn't show. Why must we live that way? That's, that's just what I've been thinking a lot lately, especially now because I've been struggling with school because I just do not feel it suiting me anymore. A few years ago you would have seen me studying so hard for a test for hours and you know, craving for attention from my teachers. But now, I could really care less of what they think. I could really care less if I get an A or an F. I know I know what I'm learning. It's just, it doesn't suit me. <laughs> Why do I have to learn things in science? Why do I have to learn social studies? Why do I have to know math and reading and all that? Literature. I enjoy school, I do, but I just do not understand why must we do subjects that we do not like. 